Hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to be showing you some new products from Altenew today, including their brand new 24 set artist watercolor palette. These are artist grade pan watercolors and the consistency and formula of these watercolors are so far and beyond what you would expect. They are absolutely beautiful, creamy. They go from a really pigmented uh, formula to a very transparent just by adding some water and also the colors included in this set are not repeats from the 36 set so you don't have to worry about really wanting and needing this palette but wanting to not purchase it because you have some repeats there will be no repeats all of these are brand new colors and many of these colors coordinate with the inks that Altenew offers. So a lot of the sets that you can find are represented in these colors. I'll get into that a little bit more in just a moment, but I wanted to show you when you open the palette, you'll have these wrapped watercolor pans. Now I've unwrapped all of them except for this one, and this watercolor palette itself actually removes from the tin uh, casing. So you can remove it and clean it. I'm going to show you how you would remove this sticker from the pans themselves and it's very easy. You just uh, peel it up from the corner and it's easy to remove. And then you'll also notice that each pan is labeled with the name. Now we'll go through the names quickly and you may recognize them again from some of the color collections that Altenew has. So we have Summer Afternoon, Fiery Sunset, Warm and Cozy, Tea Party, Red Cosmos, Red Sunset, Cherry Blossom, Shades of Purple, Lapis Lazuli, Deep Blue Seas, Crystal Water, Starry Night, Cool Summer Night, Rainforest, Tropical Forest, Seashore, Green Hills, Pocket Full of Sunshine, Green Meadows, Fall Harvest, Delectable Delights, Coffee Break, Rock Collection, and Pure White there in the top left. Now, one of my absolute top suggestions for becoming better at watercoloring and just having a better knowledge of watercolor all around is to make these watercolor swatch charts. I especially like it when my charts fit into each individual palette. It's really important to be able to swatch every single watercolor palette or tube that you own, and if it can fit in your watercolor palettes, even better. This one's cut to eight and a quarter by two and a half, and it fits right in there, and this is especially nice because they've got that sort of protective flap that goes over the watercolors before you close the top on it. So I don't have to worry about the um, swatch chart getting wet and ruined. I'm using some really run-of-the-mill supplies that everybody will have. I have just a tea ruler, but you can use a regular ruler if you don't have a tea ruler, and just a regular pen. This isn't a waterproof pen or anything like that. Um, I won't be going too much over these lines, so I don't have to worry about that. But I'm going to measure one and a quarter um, from the width there and draw a line straight down. And then I need 12 spaces on the top and the bottom, which equals the 24 individual pans that I have in the set. So that's just slightly smaller than about three quarters of an inch. And I know that by doing some quick math on my calculator. This is not something that I knew from the top of my head. I divided 12 by, or actually I divided eight and a quarter by 12, which is what I would need from the top and the bottom. And I was able to figure out exactly the length that I would need across to create 12 palette spaces for the top and the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and just mark those off and then I'll draw in lines so that I have a nice separation for each pan. Now it's important to me that this looks cohesive just because it's easier for me to read, but it's not something that's necessary. If you want to just do a quick swatch palette and you don't want to cut it to this size, that's totally fine as well. But I know that some people might enjoy the nice aesthetic of it, so I wanted to show you how I create these swatch charts for myself. Now I'm not going to zoom you in here on this pure white because it's really not anything to see, um, but basically I take a very pigmented 
uh, dip of my paintbrush and pick up a lot of that watercolor pigment and then I will start the swatch with that. I'll bring you in here closer so that you can see and right now I'm using the summer afternoon color. So I took a lot of pigment with that first swatch and then I'm going to douse my paintbrush in clean water and I'll even uh, rub it off a little bit just to make sure I get a lot of clean water. That way when I run down and I sort of do like the scribble line from the very pigmented swatch that I've done and drag it down, then I'm able to see how the watercolor or how that exact watercolor will react to more water. So I get a lot of range of color just from one pigment from these watercolor pans. Now it's really important to do this, like I said, for every watercolor you have because every watercolor palette, every watercolor tube from different companies will all act differently. This is what I was talking about with this artist grade watercolor from Altenew. It's super creamy and you can see that it's almost this really dense color. It's not very transparent and it comes off first as a really, really intense pigment. But when you add some clean water and you drag it down with more water, you get a nice transparency and a nice transparent look to the watercolor. And that's something that is really great to have with watercolor because you get to choose what you would like. If you want it to be more intense and more pigmented, you can have that, but you can also have a nice transparent look if that's something that you're looking for. Now that second color on the bottom is one of the exact reasons that I do this. I thought that was a gray color, but as I was swatching it out, I realized that it's a very dark, warm brown color. And I would have never realized that and I could have just dipped my brush right in it if I wanted gray and potentially ruined a project that I was working on. So that's another reason that it's extremely important to do these swatches, in my opinion. You get the lay of the land a little bit more, you get to know the company and the formula of the watercolor a little bit better, and that's something that I think is really important to knowing your watercolors and knowing how they act. Now that I've swatched all of the colors, I did let this air dry, but you could of course use your heat gun to set it. But honestly, by the time I was done swatching, pretty much all of them were dry anyway, because this is just such a small little swatch. It fits right into my palette, which is nice because when I put it away, it'll be in there and I don't have to keep it separately in a folder or together. But that of course is always an option. I created this card with the New Beginning stamp set, which is also from the newest release from Altenew, with these watercolors, and I just really love the way that they blend out. It's so seamless and it's beautiful, and I love the way that these watercolors react. I hope that you've enjoyed learning a bit about the brand new Artist Watercolor set from Altenew. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and all of the links to the products I've used today and all of the brand new products from Altenew's newest release are in the description of the video. Thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you again very soon. Thank you. Bye.